Okay. Okay, let me go ahead and, and, and share my screen. Let's and share the sound as well. There we go. Minimize. Well, good morning, everyone. I am uh, Dr. Anna Berrios Allison. I'm a licensed professional counselor and work at Bacay Careers. We are located in the second floor of Yonkin Success Center. If you're interested after this presentation or you know, whenever you really need it, know that we are here to support grad students and postdocs as well in all these services from decision making and looking for jobs. Um, you know, if, if there's any concern, we do also career coaching, uh, grad school application, although you're probably, well, maybe some of you will pursue a, a second degree. Uh, life after college, uh, the use of handshake, uh, Bacay on Pace, which I'm going to show you today, uh, one of the modules, with, which is actually on job fairs. Um, you can definitely give us a call at 688-3898 uh, to make an appointment at your, at your convenience. Well, today we have a special topic, right? It's job fairs. And I want to cover four things. Um, first of all, why are you going to a job fair and what can you gain from attending and participating and talking to employers? The second one is, well, what to do before, during, and after a job fair. Um, the third one is probably the one that it's, it's very important for you. Like, what do I say? You know, how do I talk to these employers? The good news is that you are attending a job fair where you are the audience. So these employers are very interested, right, in hiring you. And I think that's that's very important. And um, last but not least, just simply to be mindful that uh, job fairs are or is a strategy of job searching. You know, most people will apply for or will respond to different ads, and that's okay. But, I mean, you don't know the employer, right? In a job fair, you finally have the employer in front of you. It's certainly nerve-wracking, but at the same time, you can take advantage. And in this case, we know that Ohio State has a relationship and a partnership with these employers. Uh, they are in Handshake, which is the platform, right, that Ohio State uses uh, for students and employers to meet each other. So hopefully, um, you know, that's the, that's my hope for today to cover all these four, four, um, and I'm actually going to monitor the chat as well. If any of you have uh, questions, right? Uh, feel free to to ask them in the chat as well as we go. Sorry about that. My phone just, let me put it in silence here real quick. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and then get, get started. So why are you going to this job fair? Right, that's always the the first question. Why why am I doing this? Certainly, some people go to a job fair simply because they want to establish contacts and start building that network. I mean, remember, you don't have to go necessarily to look for a job or an internship. You can go there to meet people, to meet employers, to meet recruiters. Yes, you can explore opportunities available in your field and just learn, right? Hey, why would you hire this type of uh, postdoc? And what opportunities are there in your company for a postdoc with um, 
you know, in this profession, in this career. You can go to a job fair also to learn more about companies. You know, um, I haven't checked this particular job fair, but usually there is a link, right? You can Google it at Ohio State, and there's going to be a list of employers that are coming. Uh, if you are interested in one of them in particular, you can go to the job fair simply to learn more about the company. You know, it's important to research them before you go. But at the same time, if there's a unique situation uh, for you, um, you know, that you want to learn if they hire, for example, people with your degree, with your expertise, that's another reason why you can go. Of course, it's an opportunity to submit your resume, right? Arrange for interviews, find that job, perhaps an internship, and also meet with less familiar organizations. Maybe you have, you target X, Y, and Z company, and then in the little corner is another one that you, you never knew about it, and who knows, right? Maybe that is the company. And you can go simply to look around. If this is the first time that you're going, Hey, you could be there simply to check how a job fair goes, right? There is a lot of people, a lot of lines, uh, you know, so it could be a little intimidating. That's for sure. So how will you prepare for this job fair, right? The first thing you need to know is who is coming. Because you don't want to, well, unless you have that time, right? But generally speaking, people will target, I don't know, whatever many companies that you want to and that your time allows, okay? And ideally, you want to research those companies. At the minimum, I always say, check their mission statement, their vision, their values, their products, their services, right? Who are they? Who are they? Now, uh, most companies, when they are coming to the job fair, they will um, have a blurb in the website about who they are. They will probably have a link to their website as well. So it will be a good idea to revise that before going. Certainly, you need a resume. I'm going to give you a couple of examples real quick about uh, how to reframe your dissertation, for example on your resume and how to um, reframe your teaching, if you have those, right, as training, but in more industry lingo, let's put it that way. Ideally, you bring a couple of, co uh, of resumes per company. You can, uh, because it's a job fair, if you want to, you can print them out on resume paper. I mean, that's usually the protocol, right, that we follow when we will issue a hard copy. Now, don't worry if you don't have resume paper, that's fine. Just print them out, double-sided. Um, that will be good. You need to prepare good questions to ask. You need to prepare what we call your famous one-minute commercial. Some people call it your two-minute commercial. Other people call it your branding right? What is it that you're going to tell that employer? And there's a little formula that can help you to, to do that, that I'm going to share in a second, right? Also, what are you going to wear for this job fair? Uh, very likely, you will need to go very professional, you know, wearing a suit and um, a nice shirt or a nice blouse. Uh, that will be okay. Uh, usually we recommend closed toe shoes, right? Uh, especially for females. Uh, some attire is fine. I mean, all those things are okay. Just in case on September 27, from three to six in the Yunkin Success Center, uh, we're gonna have the um, closet, career closet, where we will be given for free gentle, um, use professional attires, uh, suits, et cetera, you know. So feel free to attend on the 27th from three to six in the Yankin Success Center. If not, Google Career Closet 
it's a great opportunity, you know, because a suit could be pretty, pretty expensive. And um, here there's an opportunity to get them for free. Bring a folder in which to carry your resume, other materials, um, a notebook or a planner to write down upcoming interviews. Maybe they will offer you some. And bring a good pen or your tablet or something, you know, where you can take notes. Uh, I think that will be important. Here, there's a, a couple of examples of how you could reframe your training experience. This is your teaching experience. Remember last time we talked on the left, you bold, on the right, you put location and dates. Always start with a verb, what you did, plus uh, maybe the purpose, the method, or the outcomes. That's the most important piece of a resume. So here, it's a, a, a nice way of saying this, right? Independent and deliver over 350 hours of training to large group audiences. That's your sessions, right? Your, your classes. Design over 30 PowerPoint slides presentation for diverse audiences. Effectively integrate a range of presentation tools, including lectures, interactive discussion, team building exercises, demonstration, maybe humor, you know, multimedia clips, etc. Consistently receive above performance evaluation uh, relative to a group of 20 peers. You know, those are the SEIs. Uh, develop proficiency in explaining complex technical subject matter to inexperienced audiences. This one, especially the one that I just mentioned, is critical for going into industry because very likely, depending on where you go, you may need to explain concepts to inexperienced audiences like the marketing department, right? So that they can market that product or whatever they you are explaining to them. Very, very important. Enhance team working skills by facilitating multiple ongoing group projects among training audiences. So this is your teaching and I reframe it in such a way that it will be very appealing to the world of industry. And just in case, I'm going to give um, Crystal all these materials so that they can forward them to you. Okay, you will have the presentation. So don't, don't worry if you need to copy, right? Uh, this is, for example, a dissertation a, or research being done by someone, right? Develop expertise in sugar soy and corn investment risk management and author a report with applied suggestions for investment and lending industry experts. Uh, analyze the effects of federal subsidy and trade regulation changes on sugar forecast and profits. Publish a technical report of findings and present the results to the Sugar Association Annual Conference. Right? So again, it's, it's a dissertation, it's a, it's a research, and we are selling it in, in a ways that um, we're saying we're owning our truth. We're even saying that we're presenting in a conference, right? Create a statistical prediction model for sugar prices, enhancing the predictive accuracy of previous models by 10%. Look, completed intensive training in forecasting models and techniques and data analysis. That's probably a course that you took did you take, I'm sorry, enhance technical writing and presentation skills through two original economics research work. Instead of publish this and that and wrote about this, we are highlighting the skills, which is what industry is more look, is looking for. Recruited, trained, supervised two new trainees in daily operation of department. Maybe you supervise two students, right? Uh, but we can call them trainees, collaborated with junior and senior colleagues on multiple team-based finance research projects. Again, highlighting teamwork, right? The content, of course, the expertise, but at the same, same time, we're highlighting your presentation skills, your technical writing, your supervisory skills, your training skills, your teamwork skills. That's what industry is looking for. Okay, you can use these couple of examples to convert your vita 
to a resume when you go to this job fair. Hopefully this will this will help. Okay, here. Once you have prepared your resume, you have identified the employers that you want to talk to, you need to prepare your two-minute commercial, okay? Primarily, let's go straight forward. Here's an example, okay? What can you say? What, what works, okay, when you are talking to an employer? The first thing you're going to do, of course, is greet them, okay? There's going to be a lot of lines. That means you only have a couple of minutes, maybe three, four minutes the most. So you need to maximize your time when you are talking to these employers, correct? Um, and they also know that there's a huge line there, people waiting to talk to them. So they may be a little bit in a hurry as well and concerned, right, about their time and how many more people they need to see, et cetera. So you need to be very concise. You're going to greet. You could say good morning. You could say hello. I tend to say whatever they are saying. If they say hi, then I'm hi. Or you can go always very professional and greet them, right? Good morning. Good afternoon. My name is. And that's, I mean, we recommend to start there because you're going to be anxious and nervous. But when you start talking and you finally say something, right? you're gonna start feeling like, okay, I survived this, I can do this. And saying your name is something that hopefully you won't forget, right? So my name is so-and-so and I'm a, you could say the truth, I'm a postdoc, I'm, a, I'm a, a, a doctor student here and there, I'm a PhD in this field, I'm a master's degree in so-and-so, and that's easy to say, right? You, you mention who you are, what you're studying and what you are doing. And then you're going to switch the talk. And instead of talking about you, you're going to talk about them. This is what is going to make you stand out from a lot of other people. Okay. Switch and show them that you have done your homework. Show them that you are motivated enough. Remember, employers are always looking at four things. Always. Can you do your job, right? Can you do the job? Do you have the skills? That's where you're going to show them a resume. But the second question an employer is always asking is, okay, can you do it? Will you do it? That's called motivation. How do I know that you can do this? Yeah, you're a genius. You have all the experience in the world. But will you do this job? So when you talk about them, and you show them, I did my homework. That, that's how you are showing them motivation. The third thing that an employer is looking for is uh, what we call personality. Okay, are you nice to work with? So the way that you interact with them, the way you talk to them, that's showing them a little bit about your personality. And they're going to start assessing if they can start connecting with you. Right? Are you coming across uh, uh, somebody who is willing to listen? Right? Are you coming across maybe too, too, too? I don't know, <laughs> too much for them? Right? A little nosy? I don't know. To you have to be careful how how you're coming across to them. So anyway, and the last thing they're looking for, of course, is um, the investment in you, money, right? Your salary. Are you worth the investment? But here, you don't talk about that, okay? You don't, just in case. So, good morning, my name is so-and-so. I'm a PhD student in X. What appeals to me about your company is, at the minimum, is your mission of so-and-so, is the quality of your products, is the services that you provide. I don't know what it is. It's the fact that you are a social responsible company. Whatever you want to say about them, that truly appeals to you. and then. You switch back to you again and say, hey, I'm very interested in. If you talk about their mission and their products and their services, maybe you're very interested in the quality of their services or, or in product development, etc. After you say what you're interested in, 
And if you are not sure, then don't say it, but ideally you, you have to have some sort of interest. And then you're gonna open your files and you're gonna take out a resume and you're gonna give it to them. As you can see on my resume, I can offer you my training skills, my teamwork, my these, my this, and this and that. So you're gonna start naming some of the skills. I can offer you my research, my expertise in these, right? That will make us a great fit. And actually we shouldn't say in close, right? Because you are not in closing, as you can see in my resume. Let's go ahead and, and actually take this one out right now. Just like that. Okay, as you can see on my resume. There we go. I can offer you one, two, three, four, five skills that can make us a great fit. So what happens when you do this? The employer cannot ask you, tell me about yourself, because you already did. Why ask? You already did, right? They cannot ask you those questions. Tell me about your skills. You already did. So in this little blurb, you already have provided so much relevant information that the employer, in a way you push, you know, push the employer to start talking about the options. What is it that they can offer to you? I'm very interested in a position in X, Y, and Z, right? In that moment, after you talk about all the skills, hopefully what is going to happen is if, if the employer start fishing you a little bit and ask, and, you know, fishing meaning asking you a couple of interview questions. Oh, so tell me more about this skill. How do you use this before? How do you think this skill can help us? If they start going in that direction, you've done a great job. You know it worked, okay? And what is going to happen with with uh, sorry with this approach is hopefully they're going to offer you an interview or they're going to tell you we're interested in 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 further discussing you know your fit with a the company. They're going to hopefully give you some clues that you were successful. And at that point, you're going to ask for the business card or for their contact information. Very important, guys. You need to ask for that contact information. It's also an opportunity for you to ask some questions for them. You need to have some questions. And there's a handout that I'm going to give that has a, oof, a variety of questions that you can ask. Okay. For ex and, and this happens after you did your little um, blurb, okay? After your two minute commercial, they start fishing you a little bit and that's great. Then you can ask some questions for them as well. Here there's some samples, right? Hey, what career opportunities are available within your organization? What opportunities did you have for X majors? What are the skills or experiences that are highly desirable? What did you look for in candidates? That question is a beautiful one. You know, who is your ideal candidate? What would you like to see on a resume? What type of training is available, right? What would you recommend a PhD that is going industry? Beautiful questions to ask. Remember, you are going there to also learn, right? So take advantage and hear the perspective of the employer. Hear the perspective of the employer. Do not ask about salary, benefits. Do not say that you need a job, especially if this is for more for international students. If you want to stay in the U.S., this is not, um, how can I say this? You are not there to tell the employer that you need a work visa, okay? Um, and that you need to stay in the U.S. Now, you have an accent, right? Or like I do. And um, you could ask, and that's okay. You could ask that employer if they are E-verified. Hopefully international students know what I'm talking, right? That means that this is an employer that um, sponsors international students. That's what E-verify means. Yes, that's a very valid question. You can ask that, you know. Are you an E-Verify employer? If they say yes, then you know they sponsor international students. And of course, they sponsor H-1B visa, which is the work visa. 
Okay. But you are not there to say, by the way, you know, I need this type of salary. Uh, you know, I can work with you OPT and all that stuff. Mm. Unless they start talking about it. Unless they start talking about it. Now, during the fair, we recommend, you know, to arrive early. Usually that's when the recruiters are fresh, you know, but hey, if you're if your schedule is busy, that's fine. Some recruiters bring more than one and they take turns because sometimes they get tired. Be totally patient, anticipate crowds, lines, keep an open mind and consider companies you are not familiar with. Scan employer handouts instead of just getting in line. You're going to see this. I'm going to show you a video, right? Approach the table from Beside to pick up materials to review, you can do that. While you're waiting in line, maybe you could even ask the person behind you to make, perhaps to check your spot, go to other tables, don't interrupt what they're talking, but you can get the literature, you can get materials from the employer. Then go back to your line, read those materials, and that can help you maybe with your little um, two-minute commercial, right? You could even listen and observe recruiters talking to other students, see that type of conversation, what questions are they asking, et cetera. Introduce yourself, right? We just talk about this with a smile, a handshake, launch your two minute commercial, ask questions, avoid, of course, taking every free item you see, right? Just be courteous, I cannot pronounce that. Just be, Take uh, be cautious, right, about taking items and don't play with the toys. I mean, get a business card. For me, that's the most important piece. Get the contact name from every person you meet and ask how to follow up and when is the best time to do it. That's very important because, for example, if the government is coming, okay, just in case the government, they don't give you their business card. So don't feel that, oh, if you ask for it and they don't want to give it to you, that's okay. They don't do that. Government will always tell you to apply through the website. And the good news is that the government hires and pays based on your degree. So there are positions in the federal and state government for PhDs, for masters, for bachelors. Government is a great, great um, uh, option, you know, for uh, those people that want to get out of academia. Take notes, et cetera, right? Oh, let me show you. Uh, so, oops, I wanted to end the show for now. And uh, tips and tricks. Here we go. Bakai on Pace was created many, many, many years ago. And I have to be honest with you guys, it hasn't been updated because there was a uh, Bakai Careers combined with Career Counseling and Support Services. And there's a lot of materials that need to be updated. More cosmetic, okay? But the content is really good. The content is still alive and, and works. So... We will suggest, you know, to go, it's called, look, onpace.osu.edu. And you're going to see, maybe I should show you the whole thing real quick. If you log in, you can save your information, okay? What is it? It's a series of self-guided career modules that can assist you in learning more about yourself, choosing majors, you know, becoming a global citizen, etc. And when you go here, there's a variety of modules you know, that can be used. It's tailored primarily to undergrads, but there's still, there's like, I don't know, like, I think there's like nine lessons, nine modules. And each module has a lot of, of um, lessons. So for example, here, searching for jobs and internships, you know, we're recommending going to your own career services offices, how to develop your professional network, how to initiate cold calls, responding to ads, and how to go, what to do in a job fair. These four are strategies for generating 
job options, right? So here, when you go to the lesson, you can go in order, right? Or you can skip. I'm doing the six right now. I'm going straight forward. I want to know what are the tips and tricks, right? So let me show this one. Hopefully. <laughs> As you prepare to search for a job, it's important to take advantage of all opportunities. And while job fairs don't always seem to be the most appealing because they're fast paced and sometimes intimidating, they are like a subway full of options, career paths, and the fastest way to an interview. Beyond a lot of preparation before a job fair, there are some tips and tricks to remember during the job fair. Be sure to bring a pen and paper to take notes and a folder or portfolio to hold company information. The paper can help hold triggers for your one minute commercial or questions you develop to ask potential employers. Don't forget to take notes immediately after leaving an employer's table so your thoughts are fresh in your mind. Arrive early. It's important to be there when recruiters are fresh and attentive. Arrive before the majority of other students get there. Take time to target organizations that interest you, but also keep an open mind and consider companies you are not familiar with. There are great opportunities everywhere. If a table is less crowded, you will have the opportunity to converse longer with the representative. Be patient and anticipate crowds and lines. Try visiting the tables with fewer crowds first. Scan employers' handouts. Instead of just getting in line, approach a table from the side to quietly pick up materials to review. Step back far enough to be able to listen to and observe recruiters speaking to other students. Determine if your two-minute commercial needs to be adjusted based on what is being said and heard. Take initiative and introduce yourself with a smile and a handshake. If you are feeling overwhelmed, Start with the organizations you are most interested in, as you will want them to see you at your best and most energetic. Ask employers permission to give your resume. Launch into your one minute commercial. Follow up your commercial by asking questions from the list you prepared. Ask about the application procedure and their preferred methods for receiving candidate materials. If they are willing to accept your application and resume that day, be sure you are prepared to complete the process. Get a business card or a contact name from every person you meet. Write interesting facts, notes, or additional contact names on the back of the card. Use this information to follow up after the fair. Ask employers how they would prefer you to follow up. Phone call, email, letter. If you ask, be sure to take note. Following up in a manner different from what was shared could show a lack of detail and follow through. Many company tables have freebies, such as pens, candy, and toys. Be courteous and cautious when taking these items, as you don't want to seem as if you were there just for the free post-its. If you take any candy or gum, save it for after the fair. Keep these tips in mind, and you're sure to make a great first impression and secure an interview. I mean, it's uh, the video hopefully, you know, have uh, summarizes pretty well what a, a job fair is and what to expect. I wanted to highlight the greeting um, just in case if you do not um, shake hands, uh, you know, for any reason, you still need to greet, right? And sometimes, well, sometimes now, very likely the employer will offer you know, their hand to, to shake it with yours. Simply, you can cross your hands. You could bow a little bit. You know, you still need to greet them. Um, it could be a, a cross-cultural communication, right, uh, scenario. And you can explain, you know, well, I don't, I don't shake hands, but this is the best way that I can greet you. Maybe because of religious purposes or whatever it is, you know, but just be mindful that you, if you don't, Eye contact is another one, right? A lot of uh, cultures, sometimes they don't do a lot of eye contact. 
um, try as much as you can. And um, they will also understand that it is a cross-cultural communication uh, scenario. Let's go for the last one. So after the fair, this one is something that I will highly recommend. Write a thank you note to the representatives you met. Why? Because nobody's going to do it. <laughs> okay. A lot of people don't say thank you after a job fair. They think the thank you is just for the interview. I believe this is a, a second opportunity that you have to impress them. So what are you going to do? You're going to send them an email. Why? Because that's an excellent opportunity, right? Again, to, to attach your resume. So take advantage of it. And then you're going to say, thank you so much for meeting me yesterday, you know, at the OSU career fair. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to repeat. You're going to write down again your two-minute commercial. You know, I was excited to learn more about your company. What appeals to me about it is one, two, three. As you can see in my enclosed resume, right? I can offer you one, two, three, four, five skills that will make us a great fit. And then that's your opportunity. Let me know what's the best way to follow up with you. The recruiter may or may not remember you, you know, because they saw so many people, but I can guarantee you it's going to be very impressed to receive uh, a thank you from a job fair. And the subject in that email is exactly that, right? Thank you from OSU job fair, something like that, so that they know. Uh, I highly recommend this little tip. Uh, continue to research the companies you met at the fair. Complete return, there's usually a survey, you know, that helps more Ohio State to, to learn more about your needs and, and how you know, they can they can help you. Uh, actually, because of the comments, we there's now a job fair specifically for grad students, you know, that wants to go outside of academia. I think that's an excellent opportunity to network. Um, use a variety of job search strategies in addition to job fairs. Use Handshake. There's a lot of employers there as well. You can download your resume there. Uh, you know, and take advantage, meet recruiters through Handshake. Um, the other one is use career services. Uh, some of them do serve grad students, uh, some of them not. And they can, you can come and see us in Buckeye Careers. We can help you to tailor your, first of all, to convert your Vita to a resume. We can help you with writing cover letters, with interviewing, etc. The third one is, yes, use, um, sorry, respond to a variety of job ads. We know that's not necessarily the most successful way of job searching, but it's still a strategy. Nonetheless, that's the strategy that is used the most by students, right? They all try to respond to ads. We will highly recommend also how to, how to learn how to network. Um, well, that's a whole different workshop, but how to build and maintain professional relationships. If you get business cards in the job fair, ask, ask for advice. That's the key of networking. Ask for advice to these employers. And then what happens is you can get back to them because you have a some sort of a hook, right? If you're asking for advice, they may or may not remember you, but still you can come back and usually we recommend to show up, you know, at least quarterly with a network and simply let them know where you are in the process, right? If you ask for advice, then you let them know, yes, I contact X, Y, and Z. I follow up and I read the article that you recommended. And that's how employers, right, and networks start being built up. I don't know if you know, but it's important to realize that when you give your resume to an employer, I believe that by law, they have to keep it. And let's be honest, if there's an opening, do you think I'm going to go with someone that I don't know? No. What's the first thing that employer will do? They will ask their own staff if they know someone, right? It's as simple as that. 
And if I know someone, the employer, if they don't need to post, if they don't need to post a position, um, that's it. They will call your referral and I will trust the referral because it's coming from someone I know. Now, if I know you because I've been networking with you, I will call you and tell you that there's an opening. If I have to post, because legally I have to post, especially uh, positions in the government and state, you know, legally they have to post them, then I will tell you that I highly recommend you to apply. I cannot give you the position, okay? You have to go through the interview process, but I will definitely have an eye on you, right? And as a courtesy, at least I will give you the interview. Why? Because I know you. I know that you could be a potential for my company. I can see motivation in you. I can see skills. Remember, skills, motivation, personality, and money. Those are the four things. Anyway, work work with us, right? Uh, we can be of great assistance in planning that career and that job search. When you go to the job search, you could be a little nervous. There's going to be some you know, jitters in there. So how are you going to build that confidence? Really, by researching the organization and its needs, you formulate and you practice your two-minute commercial and knowledge of yourself and what you want. These three are going to give you a confident approach. I'm going to tell you, employers, they see a lot of people during a job fair and very likely someone that is not prepared, you know what's going to happen? They make a line, right? They were waiting there maybe for half an hour is their turn. And the first thing they're going to do, hi, hi, do you have any job openings? And you know what the employer will respond? We'll probably say, no, not at this point. We just come to the fair, you know, to put our name out there. Why will the employer start talking to you about their opportunities if they have no clue of who you are, what you can offer, right? They're checking out, well, do you research us? There's nothing in that statement, right? Do you have jobs? Are there internships? The employer is not going to give you anything, okay? So when someone comes prepare, believe me, it's like they also wake up. They are like, oh, finally, someone that has prepared for this job fair. It makes a difference. It really does. Trust me on that one, guys. <laughs> okay, let me stop here and ask you here. There's one question in the chat. Do you know when is the career fair for the College of Engineering? Okay, yes. Let me show you. Let me first stop the, let me stop the share here. Let me put on the, Okay, here we go. I'm going to put on the chat here. This is a list of all the job fairs for the year 2023, 2024. All of them. Okay. Um, oh, my God. We are in September 19, right? Fisher College of Social Work. September 7, look, is... Oh my God, there are so many here you guys can see. There's one here, there's an engineering expo. Well, guys, you can see all of these. Look, we have like three, three, four, right? Five, um, all the career fairs for the year are in this handout. And I made sure to put it in the chat so that you guys can download it, okay? The other thing I want to do is... I wanted to give you uh, here a handout about making the most of a job fair. Okay. And last but not least, let me go ahead. I'm going to give you the this PowerPoint so that you can have it as well. And you can go back and revise the examples that I gave of resumes, right? Um, there you go. I'm giving you everything that is needed that I have used today. Hopefully that will, that will help. Any other questions?
or comments or anything. Yes, Nathan. Thank yes, you. I have a couple of questions. Uh, my first question is, there is a, a virtual job fair coming up for academic mm. jobs for the Big Ten conference. I was wondering what makes a, a virtual job fair different. How do you how do you mm -hmm. meet with employers on Zoom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Actually, there's not much difference. It's the same, okay? It's exactly the same. The difference is that you're going to be on a waiting, <laughs> you know, for to go into a room, to go into a room. That's the difference. So right. the way now some employers and check that out uh, when it's virtual, some of them, instead of having a one-on-one, -on -one, they will have a group and they will list. We need to double check if it's the virtual. Sometimes they list in there from two to three uh, group, right? Uh, um, and they will tell you it's going to be more like a, um, a, a presentation about who they are and what they offer. And I always said, go, because somebody, sometimes there's only two or three people and there's not that many, it depends, right? I think that's a great opportunity to listen and learn about what the company is saying, but yeah. also, also for those who are attending, please, you need to have questions in advance in this handout, right? making the most of the job fair, there's a list of questions about whatever you can imagine, okay? There's a lot. But you have to have questions for them prepare because if not, it's going to show like, mm, what did you come? What's your interest, right? Yeah. So that's important. So they do a group uh, presentation. They do one-on-ones and then you have to wait in the rooms. Uh, definitely dress professionally. Definitely, you know, um, important to show up, uh, uh, dress, you know, professionally with a tie or whatever, at least a shirt. And for females, I always said a blouse, very professional. Uh, I will dress up everything. Uh, you know, some people just, you know, they just change and then they have like, uh, I don't know, sweatpants or something. The confidence goes up when you are dressed professionally, right? And mm -hmm. you still have to practice your two minute commercial the same. Yes, mm -hmm. it's just that it's a virtual experience. Yeah. That's it. Still ask for their business card uh, virtually. So may I have your contact information? And they usually they give it to you. You know, they're going to say, oh, yeah, my email. They put it in the chat or things like that. If they give you a phone number, that's also a great opportunity. But try to get something out so that you can do a follow up. Right. And that's a second opportunity to address them. And yeah. Say thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's not that much difference. It's kind of like the same. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do have one more question. Yes, please. You uh, you mentioned we could ask them for advice. Yes. I wasn't sure. I didn't quite catch. When do you recommend we do that? And what? So I'm yes. looking at academic careers, for example. Oh what well, sort if it's academia. Advice? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Well, yeah, that's different, right? Is it? Well, still, still. Uh, a job in academia, you need a vida, you need a cover letter, right? You need the interview in for academia. I mean, it changes a little bit, the content, but the process is pretty much the same. Now, when do we ask for advice? When your intention is to build a network, not to find a job in that particular school. Let's say there is a, a small liberal art college there, okay? And you're like, no way, I'm not going to apply to this little one because it's maybe in a, in a uh, you know, in a place that I will definitely don't move. Who knows what? You know, it's a no-no. But you're curious about, hmm, you know, what is it like to be a professor in a small liberal art? What type of requirements, you know, for tenure track are different from an R1 institution? Because they are different. You can ask, who is your ideal candidate? What would you like to see on a vida? What type of teaching experiences are you looking for? Because it's a small liberal art, right? They're more teaching oriented than research oriented. Maybe they want, uh, um, how do they call the learning experiences with a community and who knows what they want, right? But you can ask advice. You're asking, you're in a way you're interviewing them. And that's called an informational interview. And because it's a job fair, 
of course they can answer those questions. You know, and then still, hey, you know, it was nice meeting you. May I have your business card? May I have your information, etc. And what happens is next day, thank you so much. Who knows? Maybe this person knows someone else. You never know. You never know. And that's the idea. It's asking for advice. The, the purpose is to build a network. That's all. That's all. And you know, you know. Now, if you're applying for a position in academia, and you're asking advice about how to write your cover letter and all those things, they're going to tell you, well, you're supposed to know that and, you know, <laughs> yeah, and have all that information already with your career services. You know, it's different. Yes. It's different. Yeah. If you're applying. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned, you mentioned different with academia because it's not a resume. It's, it's a, it's a cover. vita. It's a oh. CV. Yeah. It's a CV. So I wanted to ask, Yes. Is there, are there any other materials I should be handing them? Like a well, statement? Well, depends. Or a, yes, yeah. depends, depends. If you have a portfolio, okay, and you have copies of that portfolio, you could give it to them. If, if you are willing to give it, right? Some people have their portfolio online. Hey, in your Vita, in your identifying information, the link to your portfolio should be there for sure. If you have one, and of course, you tell them, here's my vida, including my portfolios online in LinkedIn or whatever you have it. Very important. Um, depends. Sometimes uh, people will give them, for example, well, first of all, let's make the distinction that on a vida, we have your teaching experience, research, university service, and leadership. Usually those are the four areas. Okay. And the order of things changes depending on where you're applying. So if it's a small liberal art college, teaching goes first. If it's an R1 institution, then research goes first with your publications, conferences, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's a whole nother workshop, but very well detailed everything. And remember, a vita doesn't have a number of pages, a limit of pages, right? So you can go and go. Okay. So when you give your vita to them, you could ask them, would you like to see my evaluations from students? Maybe if you have a copy of that, you can give it to them, right? Um, maybe your teaching uh, statement, your teaching philosophy, your research philosophy, right? If they ask for those, even the diversity statement, now they ask for them, you could have them and then give them to them. You know, in addition to my beta, here is my diversity teaching and research statements because that gives them also a way to understand where you're coming from, right? What are your thoughts about your teaching, et cetera? You could also give those if you want to, you know, but for sure the Vita. Yes, for sure the Vita. Yeah. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. You guys are more than welcome. Anything else? Not I want to thank you guys. Hopefully you have what you need. Um, and my email, just in case, is berrios.7. Um, you know, if you have any last minute questions or anything like that, please feel free. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. I have to go to another presentation, so I need to leave. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. There's a lot of thank yous there. Mm -hmm.